This is my solution to the, the question that I asked in the traffic light example. Here you can see that I've got the, the traffic lights, so these were the ones for the road, uh, set up here, red, yellow and green. And I've got the resistors set up there and I've these connected using the red, green and yellow wires to pins 10, 9 and 8 respectively, so red is connected to pin 10. And then I have the pedestrian lights, the red, amber and, and green or red, yellow, green. I have them connected to pin 7, 6 and 5. So red is connected to pin 7, um, green, green is connected to pin 5 and yellow is connected to pin 6. Uh, also I have, uh, I have a button connected, I have this button connected in pull down configuration. Um, so initially the and, and here you can see I've got the this is the this is the one side of the switch and here's the other side of the switch. So when I press the button, I'm connecting I'm connecting this pin to high. But when the button is unpressed, it's connected to low. Finally, I have an LED for the switch connected up to pin one. Uh, this may flash a bit when you're using it, but when the application is is loaded, it's fine. This LED simply lights up when the button is pressed. And finally, this red line over here is pulling 5 volts over to the this side of the switch. And that, that's all we're using that for there. So this is the, this is the, um, the implementation I've used. You can see the black wires around here is bringing the ground onto this rail. And this, this black wire here is just connecting uh, both sides of the rail. Again, this break with the W, just be careful of that and, uh, with your circuit. So just to test it, I'll just reset the board just to show you from, from start. So when I reset the board, um, you see that it goes default situation is where the traffic is flowing green and the pedestrians are stopped red. So when I press the button, the pedestrian button crossing button, uh, you'll see that the little blue light is going to light up here and then watch the sequence. So you can see here that the traffic is told to watch out, stop, pedestrians are go. After a delay, pedestrians told not to go, stop and the traffic then flows again. So that's the, that's the configurations I've set up and um, that's, that's what you were asked to code. Now I'll show you the source code for my example. Here's the Arduino sketch for my solution. Uh, it's based on the examples that are with the Arduino, that come with the Arduino environment, so I can acknowledge those. And the first thing I need to do is a little bit complicated and, and it's, a, it's um, a little bit unusual. Um, the first thing I do is I include a header file, ee223trafficLights.h and this header file contains this enumeration. Now an enumeration is simply a numbering or a, 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 against a certain value and I've created a numbering against red, yellow and green. So this could enumerate this as 0, 1 and 2 for example but it's an awful lot more intuitive to write the word red than to represent it by the integer value 0 or 1 or 2. So I want to use an enumeration for proper coding practice just as I was in C or C++ or Java. So this enumeration fortunately had to be in its own header file and it's a little bit unusual with a sketch in, our, in the Arduino but if you don't put it in the header file it can't be passed as a parameter to, the, to a function and I need to do that. Then I set up the specific uh, pins for my um, different uh, LEDs and switches and, and switch. So the first thing I have is my switch pin is pin 2, my LED pin for my switch is pin 1 and then I've got 10, 9 sorry, 10, 9 and 8 for the road um, traffic lights and 7, 6 and 5 for the, the pedestrian traffic lights. Initially I set the button state to be low and I set the last button state to be low because we want to know when the button state has changed from low to high. Bear in mind that these, this happens very quickly, that the, the, the operations happen very quickly and it could happen that the, if we just say high, well, you could have a function that happens many times when a, when a, when a switch is high. We set up and set all our, our switch pin to input and then the remainder of the pins have to be set to output. And I've, I've got this initial setup where I want the initial, initially I want the road LED to be green and the pedestrian LED to be red. So I've created this function myself, update road LED and update pedestrian LED. And now you can see the use of the enumeration. Rather than using the integer value 0, 1 or 2, we simply use the word green. As, and it, it's, it describes the state. So we say update road LED green. So let's jump down to that code there. 
update road LED. Here's the function that that's called. So the value green is passed in and is received as the argument light L. So L now has the value green in this particular case. So we have a digital right. I set red, yellow and green low just as initial situation and then I switch on L. So if it's red then right high to red. If it's yellow, right high to yellow. If it's green, right high to green. So in this case here you can see that we passed in the value green. So therefore we set all the values, the, all the LEDs off for the road LEDs. And then we see that, well, it's not red, it's not yellow, it's green. So therefore we only set the green LED, the road LED green to be high. So that turns on the green LED. Now it might look like it's a little bit complicated, but it's a lot easier than having to set the three values every time. We've got one function now to do it, and we're going to do this many times. The exact same function exists for update the pedestrian LED, and that means that we can use this as our, as our, as our, to set the pedestrian LED to red. So initially, the road LED is green and the pedestrian LED is red. Cool. The next thing we have is our loop and we want to keep reading the switch. So we want to read the button. If the button is pressed and if the last button press is different than the current button press, so that means we're on a change, a low to high change, well if that's the case, um, or a high to low change, if we do something. So if the pedestrian button now has the value of high, it means we've gone from the situation of off to on. Otherwise, this is like the rising edge. We have the trailing edge or the falling edge as well. But in this case, the rising edge is important to us because it's when the switch goes from off to on that we use it. When the switch goes on or when the button is pressed, we set the blue light, the light, one, the light that's associated with the uh, button to be high, which lights the blue LED. Delay for a second. Set the traffic to slow by setting the value to yellow. Update the red AD. Just I do this. You don't need to do this, but I do it just in case because I suppose I'm just making sure that the that the traffic, the pedestrian lights aren't green at the same time as the road uh, as the road lights. Just in case I made a mistake somewhere else. It's just a just in case. Delay for two seconds. Write the um, uh, the LED pin to low, so the button press pin has gone to low, so the LED, the blue LED goes off. Update the road LED to red, so we've told the traffic to stop. Delay for half a second just to give uh, the traffic a chance to really stop. Update the pedestrian LED so it's tell the pedestrians to go. Allow them five seconds to get across the road, it's a small road. Then uh, set the pedestrian LED to yellow so that we're saying don't cross. Delay for two seconds. Then set the pedestrian LED to red so the pedestrians should stop. Half a second later we set the traffic lights to green and off it goes again. And I just put in a delay for three hundred seconds, three, three seconds, you don't need to do that. Um, um, otherwise, if we're going from on to off, we write the LED pin to low. Now, we don't actually need to do that in this particular case, but uh, and you could leave out that line of code, but it's not too important. We also have to remember the last state so that we remember that if we were high, that now it's set to high. So then, then next time we're going on a trailing edge from high to low. So this is the previous situation. And the reason we do this again is, remember, this loop function happens many, many, many times and could happen very quickly. Except for the fact that I've added in these delays, it could happen very quickly. So it's possible that the button could be, could be pressed, and this is more important in other applications, the button could be pressed, and you leave it pressed, and several things could happen at the same time. So that's our, that's our, 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 first, um, our first example. Um, of or this is this is the traffic lights example and this is an example of how you can write a first example of of a, a useful application